It all kicks off with, as far as we can tell, we are the only species for whom the world seems to be made of stories. If you have not read Alberto Manguel, you are in for a treat. For anybody who thinks at all about this whole craft, this whole lifestyle of books and reading, uh, there is no one better, really, to my mind, than Alberto Manguel for someone who has chronicled not only the history of reading and the history of literature, but also so deftly captured the feeling of what it's like to be a reader. In The Traveler, The Tower, and The Worm, the reader as metaphor, Alberto Manguel not only combs through all literature from the Epic of Gilgamesh all the way to uh, Alice in Wonderland, looking for the instantiations of these different metaphors, but also traces out how they've changed over time. I first came to know of Manguel through his book, The Library at Night, which I read in a couple of days because I could not put this book down. I felt that I had discovered someone who loves reading and specifically solitary reading as much as I do. Uh, Manguel is uh, famous for having purchased this uh, old uh, Renaissance era or, or perhaps late Middle Age uh, era farm in France. And he's got a 35,000 volume uh, personal library that he housed there. So it's a little bit like Umberto Eco uh, at that level. Uh, he has since uh, packed up that library and moved. And he recounts that along with much else in Packing My Library, which is a good sort of uh, companion text to maybe Walter Benjamin's uh, Unpacking the Library. He also has a small little book called On Borges. Uh, Alberto Manguel worked at a bookstore in Buenos Aires. He was born in Buenos Aires and uh, met New Borges uh, and was actually one uh, of a group of people who would actually read to the blind Borges. Manguel also has a book on Homer, on the Iliad and the Odyssey. He calls it uh, a biography of sorts, um, but this one in, in Manguel's way, uh, he can take pretty much any bookish subject uh, and do uh, an extraordinary amount of research, research and reading uh, and really uh, bring it to life uh, with very clear, engaging prose. Um, really, every book of his I've read, it, it just shows what a deep reader, what a wide reader uh, he is. He also has a reader on reading, which I featured in my uh, video, 31 Books on Reading. And finally, a history of reading. And it's out of a history of reading that this book comes, because he wanted to take the uh, topic of the reader as metaphor and really do a more concentrated and expanded meditation, and that's what this book is. He goes through Mesopotamian literature, Hebrew and Christian literature, literature of the medieval period, the Renaissance, uh, on into modernity. His principal text that he uses to highlight these uh, metaphors of the reader and how they've changed over time would be Gilgamesh, the Bible, the Divine Comedy, Hamlet, Don Quixote, uh, the works of Flaubert, and even the works of Antonio Gramsci. In his meditation on uh, what Hamlet shows about the representation of a reader, uh, we also get as a byproduct uh, one of the most engaging and fresh reads of Hamlet that I've come across in some time. Gramsci's notion of the organic versus the traditional intellectual comes to light from his prison notebooks. It all kicks off with, as far as we can tell, we are the only species for whom the world seems to be made of stories. And an admission that what a metaphor is, is its own admission of the limits and failures of language. And hence, as metaphors continue to get more and more complex throughout our literature, uh, and they serve the purpose of bridging that chasm between 
two different entities trying to communicate with one another. This is where we get stories and thus readers. Manguel is the master of little quips such as, every reader is an armchair Crusoe. And he always has such a wealth of literary references at hand that he can come up with such passages as this one. Like the Lilliputian king who is aware of the passing of the clock's hand marking the seconds, or like the souls in Dante's heaven for whom all space is one single point, readers experience in their reading the inklings of unreality of everyday life, the elasticity of time, or the changing forms of space. The Commedia, that is, Dante's Divine Comedy, can be understood as the process by which the passage from one to the other is learned, from the intellectual and affective apprehension of Virgil and the other books in Dante's library, to the drama of Dante's own life under the authorship of God. And indeed, there's a huge survey uh, that runs all the way uh, through this text of the uh, theological bind that different uh, figures such as St. Augustine and Dante were put in uh, because of how much they loved these pagan works such as Virgil, um, but how uh, they also had uh, a charge from God about uh, spiritual texts. Um, but in uh, in Manguel's hands, this is done so well. He uh, we have to understand that it was certain types of societies and uh, certain traditions that really carried forth and buoyed uh, the perception and the development of books uh, and readers, that is, literate society. Every chapter, um, every section has epigrams that are uh, perfectly suited for what's ahead. And, and of course, this again just bolsters uh, the ethos that Menguel has as someone who can take on this topic and someone whom we should uh, listen to. He talks about uh, Bosch's Seven Deadly Sins, The Table, uh, which I thought was really interesting for those of us who have recently been enamored uh, by uh, William Gaddis's The Recognitions that features uh, prominently in that book as well. Another nice anecdote. The wise Hippocrates, however, after examining Democritus, turned to the people and told them that it was they, not the philosopher, who were mad, and that they should all imitate his conduct and retire from the world to reflect in worthy solitude. This comes out of uh, this historical moment where uh, Democritus has gone uh, to this town, and then uh, these people don't know who he is, but he exiles him, or, or, or cloisters himself alone with his books and his thoughts, and they think that he has gone mad. And so they consult the great uh, ancient Greek physician Hippocrates to check on him, and that's what Hippocrates says back to them. In one of the epigrams, we get this great uh, quote from Thomas Akempis. I have sought for happiness everywhere, but I have found it nowhere except in a little corner with a book. And again, from Logan Smith's Afterthoughts, we get this, people say that life's the thing, but I prefer reading. As we go through the course of these metaphors for a reader, we see uh, that there is the traveler. This is the reader who likes to journey through books and learn about the world and glimpse about the world. Then there's the tower, uh, which is likened to the, the ivory tower. And he shows how that's even changed over time uh, from something of ridicule to something um, of, of supreme worth and uh, even popularity, thinking about you know Montaigne uh, holed up in his tower reading his books and, and pinning his essays and so on. But then there's also the worm. Uh, and this is uh, the devouring bookworm who is just so consumed with books uh, that it can, it can lead to a complete disconnect from reality. And of course, he, this is where he brings in Don Quixote and puts that side by side with uh, some, some of Flaubert's late works. Um, but this is what he has to say. For most readers, however, Engagement with a text does not go beyond passionate daydreaming or wishful thinking. And yet, there are readers for whom the world on the page acquires such vividness, such truth, that it overrides the world of the rational senses. And as I was reading through the conclusion to the bookworm uh, section, I started to realize um, you know, some of my tendencies and how you know quantity really does affect uh, Quantity. Uh, qu quantity really does affect quality, as Marx uh, pointed out. And I have to be careful uh, not to become just someone who's consuming um, and, and not, really, not really processing literature. I need to slow down. 
at 120 pages. This is an excellent volume to have on your bookshelves. If you're interested at all in reflecting on you as a reader um, and how the concepts of uh, readers have cropped up in literature and then changed over time, or if you just simply want to be in the company of someone who really understands and appreciates and can articulate so well the reading life, then this is definitely a book to acquire.